Hi everyone, I am Ronel Rebudu, a BS in 4 social studies student from Negros Oriental State University, uh, Shatton Campus, and as part of our requirement in the subject uh, N403, uh, speech and oral communications for teachers, I will be going to present to you my topic, the basic principles of oral interpretation. So before that, I will going to first define uh, what is oral interpretation. So when we say oral interpretation, uh, it involves the performing of literature to communicate meaning to the audiences. Uh, for instance, uh, an interpreter analyzes the literature and uses his or her voice to communicate the results uh, of the analysis of his uh, of piece of literature. So. Uh, oral interpretation gives us an opportunity uh, to put a literature uh, concept back together again after it was torn apart. So we can also use the following technique to formulate a successful pattern in interpreting uh, any form of literature. First is uh, read the concept aloud. That helps. Then analyzing it. So that is the basic foundation of uh, interpreting a any piece of literature to analyze it before you're going to uh, determine or gather the concept that the author wanted to uh, relay on its reader or audiences. Then third is read it aloud again with the resonances uh, discovered in after analyzing it. So uh, this oral interpretation, this is one of the most practical usable form of drama. So it includes several aspects of uh, literature such as storytelling, uh, dramatic interpretation, humorous interpretation, uh, choral readings, and readers' theater. And now that we are able to determine the definition and the components of oral interpretation, so in this section, uh, we are going to discuss or tackle the different principles of oral interpretation. So first, we have the characterization. So when we say characterization, it includes the narration, the narrator, voice, the verbal and non-verbal cues. So, and also including the physical characterization. So when we say narration, so it is the part of uh, your selection in which it uh, tells, which tells the story. The narrators, the narrator is the most. Uh, important character because it mainly characterized uh, by using the voice, the eye and eye to eye contact, and the character placement, and physical movements such as the facial expression, the uh, postures, and the gestures. So overall, uh, the narrator is the one who uh, put image towards the uh, the context of the literature, the piece of uh, piece of literature. literature. Then another thing under the characterization is, aside from the narrator, is the voice. So upon doing or uh, performing an oral interpretation, the speaker shall use confidential, confident, confidential tone. Uh, they call it a uh, soto voice, uh, which is done in another tone or an as uh, uh, or an aside voice. So uh, when you say soto voice, it is not really just, uh, a, a huge usage of your voice or big it is just confidential when you say confidential it is just very low using the undertone of your voice uh, in order to put up the uh, interpretation of the text so remember that uh, uh, remember that from from vocal uh, preparation unit we have to use our voice voice variety of voice by changing the pitch uh, volumes speed and pause for effect because uh, when you are speaking uh, you should always use the variety of your voice because uh, with uh, an, uh, basing on the uh, atmosphere of the or the tune of the concept of your uh, message or the message of the literature for instance if it, 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 it's as atmosphere is low of course you, your voice must be 
uh, low. If it is in a climax, uh, climax point, your voice must uh, be, uh, of course, to climax to become an effective one. Uh, next is another part of characterization as principle is eye to eye contact. So, eye to eye contact and character placement. So, remember that, uh, remember to maintain uh, eye contact to establish connections towards your audience, of course, because uh, when you speak, you should uh, either convince your audience to believe on your thoughts or, the, or your narration. You must uh, put some eye-to-eye -eye contact with your audiences then in character uh, placement so where do your eyes move when you are look, uh, looking for the other characters in your scene so keep that in mind that uh, when you are moving you should always uh, your character placement must uh, also you need to attach a eye-to-eye -to -eye, eye contact in which if you move towards uh, which you are talking to, uh, you must also um, uh, use eye-to-eye -to -eye contact with them. And lastly, under the still under the uh, uh, principles of characterization is the physical characterization. So it is the way you portray your character with physical movements such as facial expression, postures, and gestures. Of course, it is a very important non verbal cues in order for you to uh, in order for you to they are relay the, uh, the the message uh, from a piece of literature you have to this, this is very important to uh, maintain uh, maintain good image uh, good resonance towards what you are talking about or about the literature you are uh, interpreting with Gesture uh, is the movement of your hand or uh, arm or any other part of your body which conveys feeling or emphasis. So, uh, upon speaking or communicating towards other person, you need to use gestures in order to provide uh, uh, some good atmosphere or some additional impact of your message or the, uh, the literature you are uh, speaking. Then, another principle is, another principle number two is, setting the mood so just consider this question how do you set the mood so in order in setting the mood uh, while doing the oral interpretation is you need to consider of course the first the mood then the, the voice the involvement and the imagery so when you say mood so it is the state of mind or feeling you are trying to create with your scene of course uh, every mood of the every mood of the poem or story or literature that you are trying to do with interpretation has uh, of course several emotions several moods that you need to uh, you need to interpret very carefully so then the, fo the, the poise so when we say uh, poise it refers to an attitude of composure the confidence and self uh, possession so while uh, in order to become an effective oral interpreter with some literary uh, literary uh, literary piece, uh, you need to consider voice because uh, it brings. Uh, for instance, if you're confident confident on your on the piece you are telling or the story that you are telling, uh, audiences of course will really get the point. Will get the excited will get um, will get the point or the the point you are trying to tell or in, interpret from which you know to be what the author is telling towards the audience then the involvement so uh, involvement is still under the mood setting the mood so this be mentally and emotionally involved when presenting your uh, selection of course because uh, there should be an attachment with uh, the piece you are the piece you are interpreting with with you because uh, if there is a possibility uh, if there is a possibility that uh, you are you are far you are far between the piece that you are um, the piece that you are interpreting with the uh, the emotional involvement that you have is you will not be uh, you will not be 
effective uh, interpreter or you will your piece or your your work is really not uh, effective with your audiences and uh, of course your other there is possibility with other uh, other members of your team then the imagery uh, imagery is the images and uh, what you have imagined uh, Imagine a feel what your selection causes the audience to Im image and feel. So under the imagery, there are two types of image imagery that you can uh, portray. Uh, first is the physical imagery and the emotional imagery. So when we say physical imagery, is the it, that is the images created using uh, your physical movements or the senses that you can see uh, towards what audience your audience could see. Next is the emotional imagery, so that is, uh, is sensing the emotions uh, the characters need to feel. That is the imagery that the audience usually feel, uh, not really, not can be seen, not can be hear. Uh, that is just being felt, the images that can be felt, that is very, uh, that is, thus the, the, two, the two imagery must be uh, harmony, must, there must be harmony towards each other in order to uh, in order for it to have an uh, effectiveness towards the whole um, oral interpreting of the piece. Then the third principle of oral interpretation is uh, finding a good material. Is it really nice or is it really important to find a good material? Of course, yes. In doing an oral interpretation, it is very important to find a good material or uh, to have a good material before presenting an oral interpretation in order to uh, be successful in doing so. So finding a good material to be delivered or presented is very very essential to promote effectiveness and success in presenting uh, your chosen material. So for instance, in uh, finding good material, you have to uh, look, look for a short, strong, short but strong incident or story. You can also find uh, you can also use uh, several sources in finding your good materials such as print or newspaper, uh, books or novels or any, uh, any kind of printed materials. Then media, media now this is very uh, relevant that we can use. Uh, that is uh, nowadays are we are usually using because it is very accessible uh, anywhere and everywhere and anytime. You just have to click and find the piece you are you wanted to use in your oral interpretation. It, it, there we go. Nana, uh, it is already in there, uh, compact. Then another thing is your own creative creative writing. Uh, of course, if you have your own your own creative writing, that is one good material that you can use in a, interpreting because you are the author and as well you are the narrator and. You can tell what you wanted to tell towards your readers that is not limited only towards what, for instance, you made your own creative writing that is not limited to what the reader could see because you as a narrator is doing the oral interpretation. You could tell the whole package of the things that you have written in there uh, or the emotions, the uh, lessons, the moral, the uh the about of the story and that is uh, one way to uh, deal in finding a good material in doing an oral interpretation then lastly under the principles of oral interpretation is the types of oral interpretation so i as as i have mentioned earlier in my introduction in this video so i have mentioned that there are types of oral interpretation that we can use in doing so so there are storytelling uh, dramatic interpretation, humorous interpretation, and poetry. So when I say the, uh, storytelling, it involves the children's stories and holiday stories. Then another thing is the dramatic interpretation. When you say dramatic interpretation, it includes all the serious, non-humorous interpretation. So this must be uh, memorized. So uh, the opposite of it, the dramatic interpretation is the humorous interpretation. So this is a bit lighter than the dramatic interpretation because if you have the character 
of being humorous or that is natural to you to become a uh, uh, humorous one so the, you are very effective uh, oral interpreter in this type of uh, oral interpretation in the humorous interpretation because it takes lighter to you if you have those characters and simpler look at the world open has an upbeat ending so still, uh, still this must be memorized in order to um, to put up this type of oral interpretation and lastly is the poetry so still poetry must be memorized and adlib is uh, doing doing poetry usually uh, you select your po you select your poem and that is uh, the poem is already in there so it must be memorized and of course it's important also to do some ad libs or making up something on the spot while reading or memorizing the poem in order to put up some spice or put up, put up some additional uh, information of course that is related to the poem because if you put some, uh, uh, some ad libs towards the poem that is not really necessary or that is not really related towards the, uh, the poem that, or the piece you are you are do interpreting with and that is uh, not uh, it, it will make uh, it will create a messy um, messy output or outcome towards your audience and misconnection towards you and uh, the poem so that is all for the basic principles of oral interpretation so before we going to end my video or this video uh, let us review first what are the basic principles of oral interpretation. So we have first is the characterization. So under the char uh, characterization is the narration, the narrator, the voice, the eye-to-eye -eye contact, the character placement, and the physical characteriz characterization. Then number two is setting the mood. So under the setting the mood, we have the mood, the poise, involvement, and imagery. Then third is finding a good material. Then the, and lastly are the types of oral interpretation which are uh, storytelling, uh, dramatic interpretation, humorous interpretation, and poetry. And that is all for my video. Once again, I am Ronald Aragudu, a BSN4 social studies student, and thank you.